we'll see. <laughs> maybe not for you guys, but maybe at least for those on the live stream, amen. First time I spoke a Sunday in a little over a month. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. So I'm glad to be here, amen. Let me go ahead and open up. I guess I don't have to tell you guys to be seated this evening. <laughs> But it's a pleasure to be here in the house of God. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure my tablet notes are synchronized. There we go. For tonight, what I wanted to cover is reinforcing what we should know and do know. But again, as I said, reinforcing it so that our faith gets up a little bit. And we know who our God is. Amen. And that is covering the creditation or credit that our God has. Amen. Because see, sometimes we forget who our God is. And I say that as in we think we know. But how many knows you can have knowledge and not understanding? <laughs> how many knows you can have book knowledge, but sometimes it doesn't sink into your soul like it should? <laughs> sometimes we know quotations know our God, but our actions don't show it. <laughs> Amen. Because if we knew who our God was, we'd react differently in certain situations that we're in. Amen. So to cover this, I want to uh, use a typology that we're all very familiar with, okay? Um, so we all know in this day and age, you have different fields that people specialize in, correct? For example, I, myself, have studied, I went through college, seven years of college, the University of Toledo, to study computer science. And on top of that, in high school, I went to Penna Career Center uh, to study computers. So between the two, I am a certified technician, and I have my Bachelor's of Science degree in computer science and electrical engineering technology graduated in honors. So when it comes to working with technology, as far as this house is concerned, I'm usually the go-to guy, <laughs> right? You have people like Bishop, uh, who has, I believe, nine doctorates in the medical field with nutrition and so forth, where he knows his stuff, amen. You have my father, who uh, is very well with mechanics, amen. You have different areas where people specialize, correct? Now, when you have people's fields of expertise, what does that tell you? That tells you that if I have this problem, that I can go to this person. So you know, if you have a computer problem, Richard is the guy to go to. Why? Not because he might be able to get something done, but as far as the people are concerned in this uh, body of Christ, he's the most likely to get it done. Because that's what I got training for. That's what I got certified for. Amen. That's why it says A plus computer hardware technician. Amen. <laughs> if you want something done on the physical side, say uh, working on a car. Yes. There's, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people in here who know working cars. I'm sure Brother Robert knows some things. Pastor knows some things. But I tell you what. I've seen, at least for personally, the knowledge that my dad has. Amen? And I'll give you an example with it. Um, we have a member of this church, DUL, most of you all know, who I believe it was a Wednesday night service. Uh, he pulled up, and he was letting me know he had issue with his car. Now, I know some things with cars because my father trained me. So anytime we had something wrong with one of the vehicles, he would sure enough pull me outside and everything he did, he would show me how he was doing it. He would tell me what to do. He would tell me why to do it. And he would let my, me get my hands dirty so I could get experience on twisting this nut or uh, getting in here, seeing how easy or hard it is to work with something. And he allowed me to grow in that so that I could fend for myself if I had to. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I know as much as he does. Mainly because with uh, the world he came from, of vehicles, you would, you worked on your cars a lot. But on top of that, what most people don't know is he worked, he served 20 years in the National Guard, where in that time, 
He also worked as an engineer for tanks. So he knows his mechanics very well, <laughs> okay? And it showed because when Brother EUL had a problem with this car, he called, called me out there. He said, hey, Brother Richard, can you come look at this real quick for me? So I'm coming out there, and I'm, you know, I see what the problem is. I could see it as plain as day, right? <laughs> I could see, okay, he, he explained the problem to me. I could see, I'm like, okay, but now I'm trying to figure out why the problem's there. I'm trying to reverse engineer, right? And as I'm looking, sure enough, it didn't take any time. My dad seen us outside. We were out that door. Sure enough, he comes. So I knew right away. I just stepped back. I said, well, hold on. My dad's coming. So he comes out. So Brother Ewell, well, he shows him the problem. I just stand back, and I'm watching. He, did, he just demonstrates the problem. He said, oh, he does this, one or two things, and then it's fixed. Didn't even worry about getting his clothes dirty. Didn't spend or waste any time. He just, boom, it was done. <laughs> He well just looked. He was like, what in the world? I said, see, <laughs> that's the experience and the credibility that my father has. I didn't even have to get in his way. I didn't have to do anything. He knew immediately what it was and could fix it like it was nothing and even told EUL what to do. So next time it happens, he could fix it. This is what knowledge in your field does. It makes you an expert. Amen. So we see the ways knowledge benefits us and make us or considers us as experts in our field amen now do we know or do i'll say should say do we not know that our god is a god of expertise <laughs> amen now what do i mean by this because i'm talking specifically with fields that people specialize in but do you know people can be so specialized that they have accreditation with it See, bishop is an example. What do we call him? You speak formally, you say Dr. Richard Murphy, right? That doctorate you put on there or that MD you put on there is a quick establishment on the name that certifies you know what you know. Amen. How many knows our God has some names that we could call on the name Jehovah Jireh? See, we forget these things sometimes. We know the Lord is our God. We know his name, Yahweh. But sometimes we forget the accreditation that our God has on this earth. Jehovah Jireh, which means he is our provider. We can call on Jehovah Nisi, which means he is my victory. Amen. <laughs> we can call. See, do you recognize the credibility that your God has? Now, why am I bringing this out? Because sometimes we go through life and we act like the problems that we have are too hard for God. We act like we have to rely on ourselves to get us through things. Or we have to act like sometimes we hear the, what the will of God is. We acknowledge what God is saying, but we still think we can do better. What does it say? It says, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. <laughs> Amen. Which means he will take care of it. Not that he might be able to. Not that he possibly can. The Lord will provide. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> now imagine if Bishop came to this church and started talking about nutrition. And I stood up and said, well, Bishop, I hear what you're saying. But I don't think you realize that the food also is going to take this course of action when you try to have a healthier diet. See, you have to consider this protein and you have to consider that nutrients and these vitamins and so forth. He would look at me like, do you not know how long I went to school to learn this stuff? You are telling me things I already know. What you don't know is that there's also this, this and that you're not considering. <laughs> How be it of me to teach and tell Bishop what to do with nutrition when he has not one, not two, but nine doctorates in the field and I have zero? Yet we do that to God all the time. Y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> Can y'all hear me out there? See, our God is called what he's called for a reason. He has the names that he has for a reason because it's establishment that we can know the God that we serve. Amen. And we need to begin calling on that name more and again like we should be. Amen. 
because it's in reference for us. He does not need to know what his names are. Those names are for us. The creditations you put on someone's name is not for them. It's not to boast them up. It's so that you know if you need something done, you can go to this person. If you need something built on a building, if you need some electric work done, something to where it's a public service, who do you call? You call someone who's certified. You call someone who's in the field. You call a professional engineer. Why? Because you know when you go to this professional that the job is going to be done accordingly. It's going to meet all the building codes of the state, of the city, and it's going to be correct in what it needs to be. Amen? So the credibility is not for the person doing the work. It's for your uh, surification, if I may <laughs> make up a word there. It's for your certainty that the job's going to be done well. Now, how many call on the name of Jehovah Jireh? See, y'all keep getting quiet on me. Because <laughs> I know good and well we go through things where a provision doesn't always seem there. Why? Because you live something called life. <laughs> no one goes through this thing scathed free. You have your needs. You have your trials. But do you not know you also have a God who can get you through those trials? Who has said time and time again, I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. If you would just call on my name. See, well, maybe we should get into a little bit of what his names are. Because y'all still ain't acting as energetic as I thought y'all would. <laughs> so, Sister Rosal, if you could pull us up the first scripture here. We're going to cover the first name we mentioned. That is Jehovah Jireh. Now, I'm going to read it in the King James. She's going to pull it up in the NET. Okay? So, Rosalyn, if you can get the book of Genesis loaded, we're going to go to chapter 2. I mean, sorry, chapter 22 of Genesis. Let me switch my version here. And go ahead and start at uh, verse 7. We're going to read down to verse 14. Now, for those who don't know, this is covering the story of Abraham. Now, for y'all who don't know the story, Abraham is considered the father of faith. Amen. This is a story where his one at the time, one and only, I believe at the time, one and only son that was born through his wife, Sarah, (laughs) Um, which... We won't go too much into that, but if you know, that was a miracle child. That was a promise of God. They had to wait for it. Their faith was tried. Amen. It didn't seem like in their eyes was going to happen. But sure enough, they didn't think, they didn't think it was going to happen naturally because their minds didn't align with what God saw. Amen. I mean, no, we covered that this morning. Sometimes our eyes aren't seeing what God sees, and we try to make amends for our own way. But did not God not say he will provide? So... Long story short, he provided the son that he promised. Why? Because he promised he would. He said he would. Amen. So now that he has this son, God tells him, bring your son, go up to the mountain where you offer sacrifices. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into, into the story here, but you all know the story. We're going to cover it here a little bit. So as they're walking up, uh, that's why I don't want to get too much into because we're going to read it here. As you see here, it starts in Genesis chapter 22, verse 7. Isaac starts talking to his father. It says, Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, what is it, my son? He replied. Here is the fire for the offering, and here is the wood, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? So Isaac could see the preparations were made, but there's no lamb to make a sacrifice. Amen. Next verse. And Abraham, already knowing what the Lord said, he already gave him the word to go offer up your son. But what did he tell him here? He said, you're going to be the offering? No. He said, God will provide. So his faith was already in alignment with what God needed. Amen. God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham replied. So the two of them 
continued on together. Next verse. When they came to the place God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. So now he has laid his son up to begin offering him to the Lord. Amen. And then Abraham reached out his hand, took the knife, and prepared to slaughter his son in direct obedience to God. Next verse. But the Lord's angel called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he answered. Do not harm the boy, the angel said. Do not do anything to him, for now I know that you, there's that word again, fear God. What did we cover this morning? That's a sense of loyalty. Now I know you're loyal to God. Now I know you fear your God, your Lord. Do not harm the boy, the angel said. Do not do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God because you did not withhold your son, your only son, from me. See how many knows loyalty can be tested to the point where this is not a hypothetical situation. This is how it uh, ought to be, that our loyalty to God, our fear to God, our dedication to God should supersede the love we have for our child. It's a hard one we don't hear too much or like to acknowledge sometimes because that love is so strong. But do you not know (laughs) that God, for one, we should give our children to God because he is a better father. He's a better guide. He's a better mentor. You can do great. Best believe me. You can do well for your child. But how many knows God can do greater? Amen. And so we need to remember that list of priority because God's never again going to leave us nor forsake us. So when you offer up your child to him, as Abraham went in the official sense, we need to do the spiritual sense, giving our children to God. And he says, I will take them and I will lead them and I will do for them what you cannot. Amen. God will provide. Amen. So. It says, for now I know you fear God. We'll reread it, that's okay. Because I know, because you did not withhold your son, your only son, from me. Amen. The literal sense of dedicating your son or giving your son up to God in an offering style. Verse 13 says, Abraham looked up and saw behind him a ram caught in the bushes by its horns. So, did the Lord provide? Yes, he did. Amen. Did Abraham obey? Yes, he did. If he did not obey, would the ram have been there? Probably not. (laughs) Provision, blessings come from obedience. Amen. It is the loyalty he had to God. It's the faith he had in God that allowed the provision to come. Amen. So he found the ram. So he went over and got the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So he did not have to offer his son. Amen. He had the faith to do it. Why? Because he saw, he knew from the very beginning, I serve a God who will always be there for me. Amen. Who who is my provider. And who will see to it that not one of my seat, one of my needs is not met. Amen. So if you could go to the next verse here, we'll read it NET and then I'll read it off my phone in King James. It says, And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord provides. It is said to this day in the mountain of the Lord, provision will be made. So if you don't know that verse 14, they translated it a little bit. In the King James, that's where it says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. Or as it's said in English, the Lord might provide. 
sometimes provides? No, don't add words to it. The Lord provides. Always. So we have a God who is known to never leave his children begging for bread, amen, nor our seed begging for bread, to have our needs go without, amen. He is, this is his name. We all know, we sing the Psalms, Jehovah Jireh. We give praise and accolades to him, Jehovah Jireh. This is what that means. So when you go through something where you have need, what you ought to begin to do is call out that name. Why? Because it's reassurance to you who you serve. That because you not only serve the Lord your God, but because you have faith in the Lord your God, and because you have obedience or loyalty, God's provision is always, not sometimes, but always there. Amen. Do we understand that credibility? That he has. Because we can always count on him. Do you ever have a need? Is the need ever not going to be met? Exactly. If it's not met, it wasn't a need. Your eyes were off. (laughs) But when it's actually a need, when you put your trust, when you put your all belief and faith in your God, who he says he is, This is not a maybe, it's a promise. What we have to do is we have to begin to believe, we have to have faith, and we just need to simply call out. Amen? We'll look at another name here. Now, there's a lot of names our God has. You thought Bishop had something, have a nine doctorates. Well, our God has, I believe, over 100. So, (laughs) no one has anything on our God. Amen? Obviously, I can't go into every type of name God has, but we're going to cover some major ones. Amen. So, Father, if you can go to the book of Exodus, we're going to go to chapter 17 and start us at verse 14. So, Exodus 17, 14. This is here. I believe it's talking about a fight, a war, with the uh, Amalek, if I pronounce that properly. (laughs) A lot of these older names are um, hit or miss. (laughs) But it says here, if you follow me, The Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in the book and rehearse it in Joshua's hearing. For I, this is God speaking, I, so you know it's referring to him, I, God saying, she will surely, not maybe, but surely wipe out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I will, God speaking. He will remove, do so much, will war against them, tear them down so much, he will wipe away the remembrance from under heaven. <laughs> Next verse. Moses then built an altar, and he called it, The Lord is My Banner. Now, if you're not familiar, I'll read the King James Version here. So verse 15, rereading in King James says, And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Now, that's interesting because as we sing that song, that has Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, you reign in victory. See, this is why it's important you read your Bible, because I had the understanding that that word meant that we have victory through God, which to an extent, yes, it does mean that, but that's not quite the whole picture. What does it say here? Does it say the Lord is my victory? What does it say? What's a banner? something you lift up. When we lift up the name of our God, it's then that we have victory. Are you seeing what I'm saying? (laughs) Victory comes from 
praise. Amen. When we begin to lift up the name of our God, Jehovah Nisi comes on the act. Y'all ain't here. Because <laughs> see, not only will he provide the needs, he'll also come against those who come against you. He will come against your enemies and make them your footstool, saith the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? Because I ain't getting too excited. <laughs> I'm talking about your God, the God that you serve. When you're going through your tests, when you're going through your trials, there is not a thing that could come against you. Come against you. Why? Because if God be for me, if God be for us, who can be against us? So who could come against us when our God is for us? In other words, who can come and war with the Lord when we lift his name up? I'm going to tell you, my God has never failed and he never will. <laughs> That's not the battle you want to find yourself in, being opposing sides to the Lord our God. That's not a battle you're going to win. I'm telling you that right now. For anyone watching, you don't want to be opposing God. Because <laughs> he will, sure enough, if he needs be, he will lay you on your back and humble the proud. Pride comes before a great fall. Humble yourself. Don't let the Lord do it. So it'll be a lot less painful when you do it. Amen. But our God is a heavenly father. Amen. Which means he fights for and protects his people. If he was not a protective father, he would then not be called a good father. So you see how his name's all tied together. Why? Because it's the one being. You can't have one without the other piece being there. It's a whole picture. Yes. But he is a, our good father, yes, he which means he, has, at, he is as protective over us as an earthly father is. Yes. I best believe if I was five years old and there was another man coming up to me looking like he was going to punch me in the face, my, my father would probably phew, see nothing but red. <laughs> He wouldn't let that happen. My mother wouldn't let that happen. Granny wouldn't let that happen. You'd see her get a whole new pepper in her step with her cane. She, bam. <laughs> oh, do I embarrass myself? She wouldn't let anything happen to her boozer. <laughs> That's my nickname she gave when I was really young. <laughs> Granny's boozer. <laughs> but we have love for our children. We have love for our little ones, let alone you thought, Drill Sergeant Brian Murray would do something for his son. I'll come against his grandchild. <laughs> I'm not saying he loves his grandchildren uh, more than he loved me, but I know they get away with a lot more <laughs> than what I got away with. Oh, Amen. Yeah. I'm just having a little fun here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Brighten up church sometimes. Amen. Make, give smiles on our faces. Amen. But it's true. Amen. God doesn't want to see us any more hurt than a parent wants to see their child hurt. God doesn't want to see us any more without than a parent wants, does, doesn't want to see their children without. God is a good father. If you have earthly fathers wanting to do this, how much more does your God in heaven, a heavenly father, want for you? He is perfect. He is just. He is whole. He is wrathful. He is revengeful he, because he is loving. And he wants for you what you don't want for yourself. He wants, which means more than what you want. Better than what you want. Again, referring back to this uh, morning sermon, which even when you think you know what's best, even when you think this is what uh, God has for you, based off of your own mind, your own eyes, your own understanding, this truly is the touch of heaven that I need. This is truly the blessing. God says no. For higher are my thoughts, higher are my ways. You don't even begin to know, son, the things that I have in store for you. If you would just look up to the sky, see me in heaven, and get in alignment with what I have for you, you would see the goodness of who I am, which is your father up in heaven, which can do more than the father you have down on this earth. See, I know as a child, because children's understanding they don't understand or comprehend too much uh finances and budgeting and so forth they just think well call on daddy call on mommy if i need or want something right as a child i knew if there was something i wanted all i had to do was 
call my father. Hey, Dad, I had to at least ask. <laughs> we understood that much at least. Amen. Hey, Father, is it okay if I get this? I want this. I let him know I want it. It was either a, no, you can't get that, <laughs> or yes, or a wait. Amen. But I didn't have to muster something up. It was just a simple question. And as long as he was willing to give it to me, it was there just like that. I didn't have to do anything for it. I didn't have to work for it. It was just out of his love. And provision was there. You best believe I never had to ask for food. That was just (laughs) provided. Amen. I never had to ask for a place to stay. I never had to ask to stay comforted or warmed with a blanket. All these things were met because their needs for survival. And my father, having that name, that, that establishment, a father of Richard Bry Murray II, establishes every need this child has until he's at least 18, until he's independent and can stand on his own. I have everything covered. Do we not know our God is our father in heaven? He says in his word, be, have childlike faith. Be children of God. Don't grow up to the point, in other words, where you become independent and don't think you need God. In other words, he wants you to stay in that childlike, gullible state to him. Which is good news for us. Because that means if I could have did that in real life, now you would have thought, think, thought something was wrong if you've seen that realistically. Me staying in my parents' home, walking around, uh, throwing tantrums or acting like a little child, being as old as I am now, you think something's wrong. But if I could still be as mature as I am, but still live under their household, not have to worry about a single obligation, just simply ask, hey, I need this, and it's there, (laughs) you know how much easier life would be, (laughs) right? But in the real sense, obviously, you need to have independence because you need to step up and become that father to someone else. God gave us that commandment, go forth in the earth and multiply. Just as you were fathered, you need to father somebody else. However, and that's not saying everyone needs to be a father. So I know, understand some people don't have children. It's not saying you're in sin if you never had a child. I'm just saying <laughs> the need for maturity. Amen. <laughs> Even if you don't have natural children, you could still be spiritual fathers to people. Amen. You could still have that mentorship, which that God does call you to. Amen. Especially being in the body of Christ. But the point I'm making is in the spirit realm, That's what we have with God. We are his children. He says, cast all your cares to me, for I care for you. We don't have to worry about any of these burdens. So why are we walking around so heavy burdened? Hmm? (laughs) Are we not believing who our God is? Is our faith not catching there? I know sometimes it's hard, but it doesn't change what the word says. Our God is our provider. So we need to begin relying back on who our father is in heaven, which is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, which means provision will be there. Jehovah Nisi, which means anytime I find myself in a situation where I have something or some kind of opposing force coming against me, whether it's politics, whether it's something in the government, the government itself does not stand a chance against our God when he is lifted up. Unfortunately, not too much of this nation lifts up our God. (laughs) But when, best believe, when God gets lifted up, it says he will deliver us. He is our victory because the Lord is our banner. Amen. So let's continue here. So we have Jehovah Jireh, amen. We have Jehovah Nisi. I'm not going to cover all the Jehovah's because there's a lot, but there is one we need to know in our lives. Father, if you could go to the book of Isaiah, and I would say this is probably, I don't even know if I could say that. I'll say the second most important (laughs) name. Um, The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 28. So this says, do you not know, have you not heard, 
the Lord is an eternal God. What does that say? Someone read that. What does that next line say? The who? Who? So my God creates. So ask yourself this. If there's something going on in your life, you need something and it's not there yet. Can my God create it? If you see no way there, can my God create a way? Yes. Why? He's the God who is eternal. He is the creator. Because it's in his name. Creating is what God does. Again, if I came up to Bishop and tried to tell him how to teach nutrition, or if I walked into a hospital and tried to stop the operator, or the surgeon rather, and saying, you're doing it wrong, you're holding the scalpel wrong, you're supposed to do this. Best believe who will point to the wall and say, PhD is in my name. Who do you think you are <laughs> to tell me I'm doing it wrong? I know what I'm doing. If I did that, I'd be getting in his way. But he knows what he's doing. He's, he's called the specialist for a reason. They halted the surgery for a reason so he could show up, so it could bring forth the best results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have anything in your life, what is our God called? The creator <laughs> who loves to work and operate in who knows it? The supernatural. Which means you're not, you might not always see the way God's going to operate because you're not supposed to. You're called to be children of faith, not children who know it all. Stop acting like you have to know or have an understanding of the whole plane of God. You're not called to do that. You're called to be messengers. You're called to be people who mentor and raise people up in the faith, but you are not God yourself. God does not need to reveal his whole plan to you. Think back to a children. A father does not need to tell his child everything. Children don't know or understand the concept of going to work making this money, paying these bills so you can have everything you need. Why? Because they don't need to know that. That would be too much on them. That would remove their childhood, be, put unnecessary stress on them because that's not for them to worry about. Why are you worried about creating the way when God says he is the creator, not you? Stop trying to focus on a problem and focus on the Lord who is your banner <laughs> and let him do what his name says he does. Amen. Let him do the job he's called for doing and you just sit back and watch and lift up his name and give him the praise because he, again, will always do it better. If I came and got in the way of the surgeon and fixed whatever was wrong, even if I had some kind of kind of understanding of what I'm doing, sure, I probably could get it done, but I'd probably get bacteria in there. I'd probably connect something in the wrong way and the body would have to use its own natural healing process to reroute saying, ah, oh, this was done wrong. I have to has some kind of unnecessary vein growth. <laughs> but if I would just sit back and let the doctor do it, it'd be clean. It'd be quick. It'd be easy recovery. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I could just stop being a backseat driver and let my God do what's in his name, I would begin to see what he sees in my life because I allowed it to come and manifest. Amen. Faith doesn't always mean you see the picture right away from the start. It means you believe whether you see it or not. But that faith comes. What does the Bible say about faith? How do we get faith? From hearing and hearing comes from what? The word being preached. Amen. So with that being said, you need to know what you, who your God is. That's why I'm preaching it to you now, because we need to hear it. <laughs> so that now, knowing who our God is, now knowing what our God can do, we now can have the buildup of faith so that we can stand the test of time. We can stand the trials. We can go out on the ocean with the rocky boat in the middle of the storm and not fear because we know we were called to the other side. Amen. 
Jesus told them, O ye of little faith. (laughs) And then spoke to the storm and said, Peace, be still. And the winds stopped. That was demonstration for them. Do you not know who I am? Do you not know who is with you? Do you know who lives on the inside of you? If God be for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that's in me than seen in the world. See, we take that to mean I should do it through God. I should do it through the Spirit because he can do it greater than I am. No, it's not just saying greater is he that's in me than me that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. In other words, I don't care who comes against you. I don't care if you try to do something, submit yourself, crucify your flesh, get out the way. If someone tries to come against you, if someone tries to stand against what the word of God says and you align yourself with what the word of God says, which is why you need to know what the word of God says so you can align it, amen, which if I may say that's why it's important when you do voting and so forth, you vote according to the word of God because it's when you align yourself with what word says, when you're in with what God wants, Who can be against you? Amen. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He can do greater than what I can do. He will go further than what I will go. I run wary. I tire out. What does my God say? Do you not know? Have you not heard that the Lord is an eternal God? What does eternal mean? Never ending. So we'll get back to that. The Lord is an eternal God. You know, we'll just go ahead and cover it now. The Lord is an eternal God. If you have to be an eternal God, that means you are never dying, right? Does that mean there's any dying or decaying process to begin with? Because even if it was slowed down, to a thousandth of a millionth (laughs) or a trillionth of a percent. You give it long enough time, and that change is going to be noticeable. But what does our God say? The Lord is an eternal God, which means if his life does not decay, his power cannot decay, because if his power were to diminish, and he would no longer be God. The Lord is an eternal God, the creator of the whole earth, not just you, but of the entire earth you're standing on. He does not get tired or weary. Does not. Does not get tired or weary. There is no limit. Oh. Can you imagine that? See, we think, I know for myself, we think we learn so much stuff to the point we get bogged down. How many knows if you sit down long enough, you may be reading a book, you may be studying. I went through this in college. You read enough of a textbook, there's only so long you can apprehend knowledge, (laughs) right? (laughs) People say here in the church, if preacher, you go too long, you start to lose me. (laughs) There's only a certain amount of time where people... Naturally, our flesh bodies, our flesh brains need a time of intercession to digest what we just heard, to digest what we just learned before we can go and learn something else. Otherwise, our brain capacity can only contain so much. So if you keep pouring in and you don't let what was poured in previously to settle, it just ends up getting pushed out and you start losing stuff. But that's limited. Imagine this. No limit. Now, if you want a picture of that, think of this universe. If you want to paint a picture, I'll paint paint you a picture. We live on this earth, okay? How many knows we live on a pretty large planet, (laughs) okay? Now, if I were to, say, fly down to Houston, Texas, that would take me about two hours on an airplane. If I was to drive, that would be about, what, 20 hours, Father? give or take, that's driving, amen, including highways and so forth. And that's just within this country. Now imagine going to the opposite side of this planet. How long would that take? 
you have plane flights on planes with uh, from point A to point B without stopping in between that lasts for up to 16 hours on a plane where driving takes you from 20 minutes down to a plane or 20 hours takes you down to two hours. Yet there's still plane flights on this planet that take you 16 hours. That's just on this planet. We have a moon <laughs> that on a rocket ship that breaks the sound barrier takes days to get to. We have other planets in our solar system. The closest one is a lot further than what the moon is. But there's about how many planets? <laughs> I forget what the number is at right now because I know of adding and removing planets. Uh, I'm not on top of that right now, so I apologize. <laughs> Pluto's are removed, but I think at one point they added another planet. I, I, I got to keep on top of these. <laughs> but that's so with science, they change definitions and everything. They got to reorganize everything. But how many are glad our God doesn't change what he says? <laughs> Amen. But this is how big our solar system is. Humongous. But that's just around our one sun. And if you weren't aware, I believe, see, this is where I wish I had media to show you. Me and Gina were just talking about this. We need to start having pictures. <laughs> um, if you were to consider this blue flower, the earth, our sun, I believe, would be from here to here. Our sun is a lot bigger than what the planet is because it provides light to the whole solar system. But that's one star out of millions. Now, we have this one solar system in what is known as the Milky Way galaxy. Imagine how big our galaxy is. But you know there's thousands, if not millions or trillions of galaxies? <laughs> so much so that if you were to travel at the speed of light, it would take you probably, I don't even know what the closest one, but there's some things, that if you ever hear the terminology light years, that's not a sense of speed, that's a sense of distance. Meaning if you traveled as fast as light traveled, it would still take you these many light years to get there. Now we're talking going from a car to a plane going from 20 hours to two hours. Now think of the speed of light that travels as far as we know just instantly. We can't even perceive the movement because we think it's instant. Yet if light were to travel from us to some other galaxy, it could take 20, if not uh, billions of light years. But our God, that's if you get that enormous di number or measurable distance in your head, that's still something that can be limited or accounted for. Our God is limitless. Do you not know who you serve? Now, if that doesn't put a pep in your step, I don't know what will. <laughs> there is no limit to his wisdom. There is no limit to his power. He does not get tired. He does not grow weary. He is the same God today that he was yesterday. Amen. He is called God for a reason. Know that you can call on the name of your God when you go through any sickness, any trial, any persecution. You can call on the name out of that situation. And he will not grow where it is an easy thing for him to do. This is the God that you serve. Amen. So he is our creator. Amen. Now, if I can excite you guys a little bit, we're going to go over the most exciting name. <laughs> Amen. We're going to go, Father, to the book of Exodus. I would say this is the greatest name God has. So Selena probably already knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> book of Exodus, chapter 3. We're going to go to verse 13 and go to verse 15, 13 through 15 of Exodus 3. This is covering the Exodus from Egypt to the promised land. Amen. So Moses finds God in the burning bush and has a conversation with him. God calls him, deliver my people, do this in my name. And Moses said to God, if I go to the Israelites and tell them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, 
and they ask me, what is his name? In other words, who sent you? What should I tell them? What does it say? Next verse. God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, you must say this to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am that I am. In other words, if there's anything you need in this life, I am. If you need source for joy, I am. If you need financial breakthrough, I am. If you need mending or healing on your heart, on your soul, on your spirit, I am. I am everything that you need, saith the Lord. This is not hypothetical wishing. Just as PhDs hang on the office, this is in his name. As a matter of fact, he used it as his name. Well, who sent you? Imagine a doctor coming through the hospital looking out of uniform because he got called in for an emergency. It was a life or death situation, and he was with his family at the time at dinner, but he had to be called in. He's not even wearing his typical medical stuff. And he comes in and says, I need to take care of a patient. And they look at him and say, who are you? <laughs> and he has to tell them, show that accreditation. I am the specialist. And they welcome him in. Do we call on the God, the great, that is the great, I am? Do we welcome him in to our situations where we know we need an answer, where we know we need guidance, where we know we need help, where we know we need strength, where we need restoration, where we need healing, where we need benefactor and something? I am is there. I am. I am, saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a great thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. I am has sent you. God also said to Moses, you must say this to the Israelites. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the same God that has done all these things you've known him to do, has sent me to you. This is my name. For how long? So is he ever going to run out? Or is he always sufficient? In other words, don't ever hold back. Your God is there for you, and he wants you to call on him because he cares for you. He said, cast all your cares to me because he cares for us. He is able to do it. And it's not straining on him in the slightest. Amen. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial from generation to generation. Amen. So let's stand on our feet. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. For we know we can call on the name of our God. Amen. We know our God is there for us. Amen. He is a way maker. Even when there seems to be no way, he will make a way. Now, we didn't cover the scripture, but if you want to read it, Romans says, those who call on the name of God will be saved. Amen. That comes from Romans 10, 13, if you wanted to put it up, Father. Romans 10, 13. It says, all we have to do is call on his name. Amen. And the name that is Jehovah Jireh, the name that is Jehovah Nisi, the creator of the universe, not just of earth, the universe. Amen. Because he created it all. Amen. Beginning to end, alpha and omega, <laughs> beginner and finisher of our faith. <laughs> Amen. The great I am. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord 
will be saved. Amen. So let's just lift our hands to God, amen, and just give him the praise he's worthy, amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being the great God that you are. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, for being the one that we can call on to day and night, for never having a time frame of or of hours of operation, Lord Jesus, but you are constantly watching over us. You are constantly there for us. You are always wanting to do for us, Lord Jesus, and you are here when we call. You never run out. You never lack, Lord Jesus. You never grow weary or tired, Lord Jesus. As a matter of fact, you said that you love doing this for us because you love us. That's your love for us as our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. So we just want to give you the glory, honor, and praise for being who you are in our lives, for shining and showing yourself as the great God that holds us up, Lord Jesus, Lord, and always providing for us and making it, bringing us through and making sure, Lord Jesus, that we have everything that we need, that we never go without, that we never find any lack, Lord Jesus, but that we stay the top and not the bottom that you want us to, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this power. We thank you for having this connection with us and showing us this love, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, that all we have to do is call on the name of our God in every and any situation, whether it's for us, whether it's for someone else. It is not limited to just us. Oh, hear me now. Hallelujah, because there's no distance in prayer. God said, just call on my name and anything that you ask in my name, if believing, I will do it, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So let's just give him the praise. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the good God, being the good Savior that you are, the deliverer, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Rapha healer, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for covering every aspect of our life that we could think and more, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you for being the God that only you could be, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. For you alone are God, and there is none like you. There is none that stand beside you, and there is none that come close. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you and give you the praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We'll go ahead and close the service out here, Father. So we thank you for those tuning in on the live stream. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. But this is where we'll end it for you. We thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next time. So we love you and God bless. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for tuning in to our stream. However, this brings a conclusion to our service. We would like to invite everyone to help us out by making any donations as you please, as they do help us to continue our ministry. If you would like to send a gift online, Donations can be made using the donate button at our website, faithtemplebg.org, or if you would prefer to send something in the mail, all checks or money orders can be written to Faith Temple and can be mailed to the address 175 State Street in Bowling Green, Ohio, zip code 43402. We really do appreciate any and all gifts sent in. We thank you for tuning in to our stream, and we hope to catch you on the next one. We love you, and God bless. Thank you.